It's time to put together everything we've learned so far about probabilities into one large example, and in so doing, learn about the law of large numbers. So we'll see that come into fruition as well. Now, your instructor may want you to do this in class with them, so if that's the case, then stop watching the videos right here. But if your instructor wants you to watch this video, then welcome aboard. Okay, so we're going to imagine an experiment where we're tossing a coin and a die, a six-sided die, at the same time or if you'd like one before the other, it doesn't really make any difference. Now the first thing we want to figure out is how large is the sample space? Well, let's see, for the coin times the die, right? Coin right here, die right here. For the coin there's two options, for the die there's six options, which means there's 12 outcomes total. That is the size of the sample space. How large is the sample space, which they asked. So now we're going to have to make a tree diagram from that sample space. So we reviewed multiplication rule of counting. That's not so large that we can't make a tree diagram out of it. So let's do it. So when you toss the coin, you have heads and tails. Those are the two options. So then you go back and make your little V right there. Now after I get a heads, Oops, that's a tails. There it is, heads. This is a euro coin. So after I get the heads, then I have to toss the die, and there are six options for that die. So I'm going to have to write one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm going to connect them all back to a point right near the H. This one really does look like a fan shape. Now straight below that six, vertically aligned, I'm going to write another 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And again, you keep that vertical alignment and then go back and make the lines all connect. Oop, my last line got a little wobbly there. <laughs> Alright, now the sample space has to be written, otherwise we don't get full credit. And that was what was actually asked to be found, the sample space. The tree diagram is just to help us find it. So to get to this one, we had to go H. So it's H1, H2, H3, and so on. And then all the T's, T4, T5, T6. All right, now what's the probability of each one of those? Well, there's 12 outcomes total, so the classical probability is 1 out of, oh, it's the probability of H1, by the way. It's 1 out of 12. Now, 1 out of 12 would be 0, 0.0 something. <laughs> 1 divided by 12 is 0 0.083. All right, so there we have it. So I'll say an approximation because I wanted a decimal and a fraction. So it's 0 0.083. Wonderful, see? So that's a tree diagram, the classical probability, and the multiplication rule of counting, all reviewed. Okay, but now we're going to use empirical probability. Now, if you're watching at home, you can use a simulator or you can use your own die and coin, right? So you can toss, whoop, I tossed it right off the screen. I have a tails and a two. Whoop, you can see it right there. Um, but you can also use an online dice simulator. So let me go grab that. It's right here. So it's onlinefreedice.com. So I can click roll on the die and flip the coin and I have a T and a 2. So you would circle, oh my goodness that worked out, I got a T too, that's a tails too, I got it both in real life and in the simulator. It's amazing. Alright, so I have T2 for me, and what I do is I have the whole class full of students do this as well. So everybody takes a die and a coin and they all toss it. Or you could play along at home on that simulator. So in one class that I did this with, I had one student have an H1 out of the 20 students that were in class that day. So 1 out of 20. So the empirical probability, because it's empirical because it's from data, would be 1 out of 20, which is 0.05. 
So that's both the fraction and the decimal. Easy enough. Now, this is not the same as what the classical probability. So the classical probability, remember, was 0 0.083. And the empirical probability is 0 0.05. So why are they not the same? Well, they're not the same because classical is from logic and experimental is for, or empirical is from experimental. And real life is messy. <laughs> there, and I just wrote that up. So classical is from logic, empirical probability is from an experiment, and real life is messy with a lot of variation, variability. Hence the risk factor. That's why people like to gamble. They like to bet on that variation, on that variability. All right, now our empirical probability is always the same. So we just compared classical to empirical, but what about another empirical? What if we did it again? So what if I took my coin and my die and I tossed them? Oh, and I did get H1 that time. Look at me, right? So what if I got H1 that time? What if we did it over and over, right? Okay, so suppose total, including me, there were two trials that were H1 out of this class. How many um, trials of the experiment were done for this round? Again, it would be 20 because there were 20 students in the class that day. The empirical probability this time is 2 out of 20, which is 0 0.10. Hmm. All right. Well, actually, um, I have my class do it over and over and over, but um, compare the empirical probabilities found with the previous one. All right, so the first empirical probability was 1 out of 20, which was 0 0.05. The second one was 2 out of 20, which is 0 0.10. So again, real life is messy with a lot of variability. <laughs> So they're not going to be the same every time. So not to sound like a broken record, but real life is messy and it has variability to it. So they were actually not the same. Now they could have been the same. I've had that happen in a class where the two probabilities are the same and then I have them do it all again and the next one is not. So it, it just it varies from trial to trial, from experiment to experiment. That's because every time you do it, it's going to be slightly different because there's variability, there's randomness. And that's what we're really seeing. I guess that's actually a better word to use than variability. I'm going to actually write that up here. Because that's more important. We're seeing that randomness. We're seeing that variability in results. All right. Well, let's do it one more time, shall we? <laughs> actually, let's do it a couple more times. So imagine all the students in the class, again, either use the simulator or they have a coin and a die and they toss them. Oops, I got heads and three that time, right? Now, I actually have my students do it again as well. <laughs> I just had us keep doing it over and over and over because it was fun, you know? Right, so I got heads and two that time, right? So I had them do it over and over repeatedly and I found zero on one time. On one trial, we had nobody in the class had them at all. And then the next time we had three people have it. Yes, this really did happen. This was a real class, I promise. From winter 2019, as a matter, or 2020, excuse me, as a matter of fact. So again, each time it was 20 students. Um, actually, I think it was 20 people in the class. I think I counted myself. So zero out of 20 and three out of 20. Right. All right. So that means that. All together, right? The empirical probabilities for the first time was zero. The empirical probability, so zero out of twenty, which is zero, and the empirical probability for the next time was three out of twenty, which is 0.15. So I'm actually cheating because I'm doing. I did it a third and a fourth time. I did it multiple times. 
Okay, so I like it. It's fun in class. You get to toss the dice and watch, you know, dice fly around the room <laughs> accidentally. All right, so we did a third and a fourth time. So third time here, fourth time here, third time here, fourth time here. Now, let's put together all four, I'm about to spell four with the number four in front, all four trials of our experiment and see what happened. Okay, so we had one trial with one, one trial with two, one trial with zero, and one trial with three. So one plus two plus zero plus three means six total. There are six trials total that had heads and one going on. All right, now how many experiment trials were there? Well, there was 20 for each of them, because there were four trials of 20, which makes 80. So six and 80. Now, what's the empirical probability of tossing H1 in our experiment from the total results? All right, so let me grab a calculator. 6 divided by 80 is 0 0.075. Well, so let me write down how we did it. 